Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to the Brianna's Pickleball Podcast. We are on episode 008, and today we have a very, very special conversation with a very special person. If you obviously are following anything in the news, paddles, um, a lot of things are, are happening in the paddle world. Illegal paddles, legal paddles. This is the podcast that you're going to learn a lot uh, from a person that has dealt with thousands of paddles. Um, and I'm going to introduce him, Brett Warner. Thank you, guys. Where's the, where's the applause? Where's the applause? Come on. Brett. There it is. There it is. Brett Warner, everybody. Brett Warner's in the house. Okay. So, uh, yeah, in this episode, we're going to talk a lot about the paddle industry. Um, we're going to give you really um, precise details on on just the paddle controversies and why they exist. And we're going to learn a lot today. So buckle up, stay tuned. Brett Warner, uh, you started a, a company how many years ago? A year ago. A year ago. Paddle Fix. That's it. Um, and the reason why you're here today is you have a lot of information for us. And for those people out there that are listening and looking at all these tweets by pros and obviously the PPA, there's a lot of stuff going on right now with paddle controversies. But uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing with Paddle Fix over the past year and why you think, um, well, why I know that you're qualified to talk about paddles. Well, first off, congrats on the podcast, guys. Hey, thank yeah, you. Thanks, Appreciate man. making the first 10 episodes. That's right. A uh, little controversy, but uh, no, I'm, I'm not here for fireworks tonight. I'm here to, you know, give, you know, a, a different perspective than what I've heard uh, being, you know, talked about on social media. Um, you know, I, I have a, you know, what I think is a unique perspective because of, you know, my business partner, Tracy Wallstad, who I, I think is, um, you know, uniquely situated to talk about, uh, you know, paddles. We started the first pickleball paddle repair company about a year ago. Yeah. Over the last two and a half years, Tracy has repaired over 4,000 paddles across all brands. Um, I think, in my opinion, he is just an engineer at heart. He knows what quality control is. He knows what assembly looks like. He knows what innovation um, is when he sees it. Uh, he knows what, you know, marketing claims are as well uh but you know it, he is uh, one he's a good dude so I, I think as we get into this i've brought some uh some videos and pictures from from the workshop and i would love to kind of share that with your audience because yeah. i think um explaining what's going on yeah. and why it's happening is you know just as important as everyone's feelings about um the advantages or disadvantage or however you want to frame it yeah Every, everybody's got their opinions right i mean Let's get down to the facts. That's that's what I go. would love to hear. All right. You know? Okay, cool. Um, real quick about paddle fix, though. So um, paddles break, right, over time, or they have, let's say, defects or, or whatever, right? So what do you guys actually do? So they send it in to you, and then you guys just basically fix it for them? Or how does it work? How does the process work? Right. So uh, we started the company a year ago. Like I said, uh, I'm a player. I, um, I go through paddles relatively quickly. Um, I went through the same experience most players do where you have edge guards that come loose. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, I don't play a lot of doubles, but, uh, I, you know, occasional paddle tap after a match, but <laughs> single um, specialist, huh? Yeah. Uh, hard to get people to play with you at noon in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, especially uh, during the summer. And I, and I know you, you like to, uh, play at noon in the summer. I can convince one person at a time to come out and play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't get three people to join me for doubles. That's fair. Um, but yeah, so I went through the same experience, right? You go through paddles, they, they yeah. play great when they're new. Right. A few days, a few weeks go by, that paddle seems to play a little different, right? Some things, um, as far as the, the surface roughness, doesn't feel the same. The catch isn't the same. Accuracy, consistency, um, power, the sound. Uh, sometimes the handle feels like it's not as secure as it was. Um, you know, sometimes there's actual player, uh, what is it, player damage, player, you yeah. know, and, Racket abuse. Racket, yeah, that's right. Paddle abuse. Yeah. There it is. Sorry. Yeah, that's, uh, you hear that a lot. But um, no, I, I don't throw paddles, but I, I have, you know, I have sent them back in for warranty. But mm -hmm. again, I I, um, I love the game. I want to see the game grow. I want to see um, players in Arizona do very well. I want to see infrastructure built into this game. And part of that was, you know, in my off time from work, uh, finding folks that I think are adding value. And I came across Tracy yeah. Wallstad, who 
at the time had a business card, referred to himself as the mad paddler, because that's what he was. <laughs> he would just be in a workshop taking paddles that, you know, might otherwise be in a trash can and bringing them back oh. to better than new. So right? he did that. He was, he was doing that already. You know? Yeah. He, you okay. know, he, he was, a. I mean, his, his background, um, air force mechanic, he'd fix all the cool fighter jets, the, the mm. warthogs. He, um, worked for the DOD in advanced composites and quality control. Uh, all Damn. of the, all of the materials that are used in aerospace are also used in pickleball paddles, right? It's so he's, he's a, he's a little overqualified. Then, he, yeah. He can put this back together. He, he basically yeah. could do this with his eyes closed. And this is like basically reading the ABCs for him is what you're saying. <laughs> right. So I wish I was that smart. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this isn't even a plug for, for paddle fix, but it, yeah. if you want to check it out, it's paddlefix.com. You'll see break fix services, right? So edge guards, when they come loose, yep. you know, it, this is a layered product. You want to keep the edge guard secure so we can mm -hmm. install a new edge guard. We take the old one off, put a new one on. Yeah. If there's a surface crack, normally at the strike point, which would be the top corners, um, we can repair that as well. And then like, a handle. Like an actual crack, you can repair mm -hmm. it? And then a handle break, wow. right? Um, yeah, handle breaks. We've seen those. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's one where if you don't want your paddle back, you might see an orange bag at a tournament, which would be paddle fix donations. Mm. The idea there is that uh, tournament directors are starting to pick up on what we're doing and they are um, collecting paddles that players no longer play with or that they no longer play with because they are, um, you know, broken yeah. to whatever degree. Yeah. And right. we will refurbish them and donate them to a boys and girls program to just put paddles in players hands and kids hands because it's something that we you know in the seat that we're in we're we're able to do that's cool man but, uh, and i didn't even know that right. but like i mean working at legacy i find so many broken paddles or just paddles that are left there Dude, you so need now to, that you i know that i pen. will be texting you probably almost every other day i'll appreciate that yeah. so again I, I i do one percent of the work right this is yeah. not my job um but i think it's uh it's something that Tracy and I call the Jerry Maguire rule where mm -hmm. you, it's hard to be the athlete and the agent. So right. I view myself as, you know, Tracy's agent. He does the stuff in the workshop. Yeah. I get to meet a lot of people and players and companies that have problems they want to solve. Yeah. Um, and we, we've kind of developed the, the initial concept, which is let's provide a service that benefits the sport. Yeah. And, you know, really when people kind of find out what the company is, it, it becomes more interesting, which is, you know, this is the best market research on the paddle industry in the world, right? What are we going to do with it? And it's gone a couple different directions over the last year. And mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, um, on a track now to go somewhere that's a little bit unexpected for a lot of folks, probably disappointing for a lot of folks, mm -hmm. um, but probably very exciting for Tracy. So, uh, you know, we'll get into that later, but okay. I want to answer your questions today. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get into that later, but let's just, that. this is I guess, my initial question because I haven't sent a paddle into you guys. I know you guys, you guys have service. You said over 4,000 paddles, all, all, every single name brand out there. Right. Um, and we can get into those uh, brands, but what is, what are like the top three, um, things like that you guys fix the most common ones? most common is definitely yeah. a loose edge guard. Yeah. So right. loose, just an edge guard coming loose. Right. And what, what would be some other ones? Um, you know, a lot of times when you take off the edge guard, the yeah. reason that that edge guard is coming loose is because of a uh, design flaw or a, um, an issue during production on a mass produced product mm. that, um, you know, created, uh, either separation from the, the edge guard to the, the paddle face. So as you take apart the edge guard, a lot of times we'll be fixing surface cracks as well. Okay. So we do guard. fix the handle break. You know, you see, and again, team Selkirk all the way around, but you know, Tyson McGuffin, he's got the Bo Jackson. He breaks that paddle over his knee from time to time. <laughs> did he send, did he send his into you guys or no? no? He gives them to fans that bring them home. And okay. he's just, he's just a good dude. He does. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the right thing to do is yeah. to have the fans have a, you know, something to bring home. But you know, we've, we, we have taken paddles out of the trash can just to, just to test Tracy to see what he can do. And, yeah. you know, I, I gave him just a paddle, just the, the, the paddle face the handle. I didn't even know where the handle was. Dude. I, mean, I just thought of an idea. I don't know how it came to me. You guys should do one where you take, you take different parts of different brands and put it together. 
That'd be a like, fancy uh, like, little like piece of art. Yeah, you like know, a, a handle from you guys are, Selkirk. Or yeah, your, instinct, oh. your instinct is right on. It's it's best of breed. I'll tell you, we can we can tell you the edge guards that are plasticky that yeah, um, you know, uh, dry out, crack. We can tell you the cores that are soft that you know stick to the the paddle face. Right. You know, it, there's a lot that goes into these, but I think your instinct is where Trace and I are landing. If only we had you a year ago, you could save us a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That honestly, I, I I really don't know a ton about pickleball paddles. I know what I like. Mm. I know what I don't like. And as far as what I know I like, it's the face of the paddle and I know what size of the paddle I like and I know how big and small I like my grip and that's about what I know. So as far as all of these paddle companies go, I mean, what are some of the paddle face um, materials that that we're also used to using but maybe don't know the names of? No, that's, that's a good question, right? So um, typically you, you've got three options. Okay. Right, you have a um, a fiberglass, which would be, and we're talking about the face, the face, right? the okay. face. So fiberglass is going to be completely um, uh, smooth when yeah. you touch it. Okay, and then they put an applied grit on it, either during production or applied grit after production. And this is for so think of the original, yeah. Franklin Ben Johns, right, yeah. right, coming out of the packaging felt really rough, right, but hmm. after players would play with it a few days, weeks, months, it would, you know, it's not the yeah. same paddle as what they bought. No. Right? So that's an applied, yeah. so that's okay. fiberglass. Then you get into carbon fiber, which is like gearbox, right? It's very hard. It's, um, uh, you know, it's a straw material, but it's, it, I don't know, it, it, this is an option where you can do a powder coating or an applied grit over it. Okay. Right. And the reason I bring that up is because that's kind of like the, the epic, you can get into where a lot of the paddles that people love playing with today and had the controversy for Paddlegate 1.0, but it's the raw carbon fiber. Yeah. And it's right. a linear weave where um, you see different companies promoting different um, brands of raw carbon fiber. I think there's a Torre 700, but it's basically the weave of that carbon fiber is thick enough where it will pass a stare at test within USA pickleball standards. Meaning if you were to go thicker, the surface roughness between the peak and the valley would be too much. It would not pass. Interesting. Right? So when you're talking about the the surfaces, the raw carbon fiber, which is where most of the players are playing today. Yeah. Um, I uh, I like, that's what I'm playing with right now. But those are yeah. the, the paddle based materials. Did so, you say this was your paddle? It is. Wow. Banged it up pretty much, yeah, huh? You said you're... Uh, <laughs> It's my practice paddle. Yeah, I, yeah. I see. I, I, I keep my fresh paddles for tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you said real quick, just to uh, backtrack, we got fiberglass. You said carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. And what was, are those? And the then raw, uh, raw carbon. Raw carbon, carbon fiber, fiber, right. right. Which would be like the CRBN or like a lot of the. Electrum you know, and Electrum, Yola. Yola. Okay. Yeah. And then the halo as well. The halo. Absolutely. Okay. Right. So those are the, those are, what would we call that outside layer? Or surface surface okay so now let's talk about the core so what, what are the i guess top top core materials then or is it all so honeycomb it's it's almost all honeycomb i think uh in the past it was uh had everything from nomex to i'm gonna get i don't want to say something that's wrong but yeah almost all the paddles are polypropylene um honeycomb Okay. And uh, we'll show some, some pictures here yeah. in a minute, but okay. the core material is almost uniformly across all paddles, polypropylene. So why, okay, what makes honeycomb or polypropylene, is that what you say? What makes, like, why? I mean, there's a million other materials out there, right? Sure. It's, like, it's where the industry has landed. I think that, you know, when you think of the industry, how many, yeah. how many paddle companies do you, do you think are out there? Well, I think a lot more than we know, but also at the same time, like we know the top brands that are used in pickleball. All right. Well, how many factories do you think are out there? Probably not that many. Not I don't know. Many. Well, let's start with paddle companies. And I, I think I, I kind of cheated because you, you kind of, well, you, I think you told me it's like over 500, right? I think there's over 500 approved paddle brands. Wow. Yeah. Right now. And brands, not, brands. not paddles. Brand. Right. right. Lifestyle brands. They are not manufacturing paddles. They are ordering paddles. Mm -hmm. um, they are, um, you know, to the extent they are 
um, you know, making a unique mold, unique shape, um, yeah. you know, maybe, but you know, they also would, you know, just as easily order off the existing menu of shapes, sizes, uh-huh. um, they could do their own testing. But you know, a lot of these brands are people that are excited about pickleball that have some, some goals to grow the game locally. Um, brother, sister teams, uh, right. husband, wife teams, mm-hmm. you know, business partners that, you know, wanted to just start a company, but they're all, you know, most of these companies, yeah. probably over 90% are what I would call lifestyle brands. You know, they don't have an engineer going through all this stuff. They, they're pickleball players and they want to have their brand on their paddle and sell it locally. And, yeah. and, uh, I'll tell you the factories that they're ordering from allow them to compete with the more established companies. Um, it's a very low barrier to entry. Yeah. And some of these in, in the same factory, right? These lifestyle brands are, are made in the same, these paddles are made in the same factory as some of the big brands we know. Again, we, uh, we take paddles apart yeah. for the, the job that we do, the service we provide. So right. very quickly yeah. we can tell you if, uh, you know, there's four staples to attach a butt cap and if right. there's a certain color or foam underneath mm. the edge guard, it's, uh, you know, we, we can pretty quickly tell you where it's wow. coming from. That's cool. Did you guys know that there is a, there's actually a Nike pickleball paddle? Really? Yep. I and, uh, I, I saw it when I, I went to a Nike store and they put a paddle up and I was like, wait a second. I was like, that's oh, a pickleball no, no, paddle. I've seen that. I think they just use that for the next person in line. That's exactly what it was. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. I, I was kind of fooling I, you guys oh, there, but, no, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I thought I like went up to them and I was like, you guys have pickleball paddles? And then she was like, what's pickleball? And I was like, oh, oh wait, God. that's the pickleball paddle. She was like, oh, we just use it to call the next person up in line. Love it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Not to say Nike's onto something. It's never I know. the workshop. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking the first time. And yeah, I was super wrong. Yeah. But wow. We live and we learn, folks. So. So, well, let's, let's go back to this. You said you're talking about the low barrier of entry. So now that we're on this. Yeah. So what does it take? Like, Brett, like if I was anybody and I, I had some money, what would it look like? Like, how easy is it for me to start uh, a paddle company right now? All right. So you probably have two options. Easy option is to go to Alibaba.com, uh, put in a keyword pickleball paddle, and uh-huh. you're going to see most of your favorite paddle shapes just pop right up, right? Jeez. Um, you know, they have sample prices. They have minimum, minimum order quantities. Uh, the mm-hmm. folks that are behind the scenes building paddles, and most of them are... Um, you know, running at capacity, they are filling orders. That's the business they're in. They yeah. do a very good job of filling orders. And if you want to make an order, they will fill it for you. They will wow. tell you, tell us uh, how many samples you want, what models you want. And then uh, when you're ready to place an order, we'll, um, we'll accept your artwork for a logo and uh, we'll talk about packaging. And they are very professional and they provide a service and those factories are making paddles, you know, at, at you know, full steam. Wow. So that's option one, right? Okay. Option two is uh, if you, you know, if, if you know enough about, you know, where the, the paddles are being made, you could go directly to the source and you could talk directly to the folks that represent the factories and save yourself a lot of time. You can ask for a catalog and order samples. And again, very professional. They provide a service. They are making pickleball paddles wow. whenever the lights are on. They may not turn the lights off, right? Wow. Yeah. So you need, uh, you know, the, the blank, not the blanks, the, um, the molds, right? No, the molds, a unique mold would cost 1500 to 2,500, I think. Okay. Um, and so you can give them specs on just like, I want it this thick and then also this circumference or or whatever the the edge, the edge. You find a shape that you want to try that doesn't, it's not in their catalog. That would be a unique mold. Wow. But, and what's like a standard mold cost? probably 2,500. Okay. Jeez, right. But minimum order quantity, some of these, you know, um, you know, unit costs are nine to $12 at factories. You know, some of the more high end factories that make some of the, wow. you know, our favorite brands yeah. are 28 to $36 per unit. Right. Oh, so okay. you're talking about, you know, minimum order quantities. I've seen them as low as 200. I've seen them, yeah. you know, typically, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. Um, there's probably only a few companies that are ordering in quantities above that. Yeah. But um, again, the, the, the conversation, the question was, what's the barrier to entry? And 
So a few thousand bucks, basically. I can make you a Briones yeah. pickleball brand. You know, I think it's uh, <laughs> hey. whatever your minimum order is. And then yeah. you're going to send in, I believe it's six samples to USA Pickleball. A gentleman named Carl Smits. He's behind the scenes of all the equipment standards. He, yeah. He's on that committee. I think he leads that committee. Very yeah. smart guy. He has an aerospace background, I believe. Yeah. But um, his labs test and approve the paddles and you get to keep the stamp on it. It says USA pickleball approved. And I think that cost is, I may have said it was, I think it's 2,500 mm -hmm. and you have to do that for every model, right? So if Jeez. you have an elongated model, but or a more traditional model, that's $5,000. Yeah. But you do it once. And then, and then after that, all of the other ones are approved. Correct. Right. Coming so, out of the factory, they are approved. So that's the problem. And we're going to talk about batches sure. and delamination soon, but so that's where the issue I Usually. think that's the issue for, you know, the paddle gate 1.0. That's where that started about surface roughness. I think it's a okay. different issue for what happened last week with paddle gate 2.0. Yeah. Pickleball is obviously going crazy. And as it's getting crazier, the paddle gates just keep on coming. How many do you think, uh, how many more do you think we're going to have? It's, it's just part of the industry, right? You've yeah. got, a lot of folks excited and wanted to be a part of it. And yeah. I think that uh, new companies, small companies are going to try to push the limits and be aggressive. I think they're yeah. going to ride the waves of when things are going their way and people are talking favorably about what they're putting out there. Mm. You know, things are good. Let's, let's, you know, press the gas and see what we can get. And then, you know, what happens over time is, uh, you know, you, you might get out in front of your skis a little bit. You know, you have people, you know, saying I I've played you before that paddle, you know, is different than how you were able to play me a week ago. Right. Something's mm -hmm. different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it, if it goes through some scrutiny, you know, it, it may have some red flags to it. Right. I think that's what, what's, what's going on last week. Yeah. Right. Was, yeah. You crossed, you know, you know, too many competitive players going out there trying to win money and wanting to have a level playing field. And yeah. again, I, I think, uh, when we get into the questions, you're going to ask me, you yeah. know, are, is this on purpose? Right. And yeah. Okay. Well, let's, we'll, we'll jump into Powergate 2.0. And, okay. and for those of the viewers and listeners out there, we'll get really specific here. Let's start with Powergate 1.0. And it was the first problem and issue for everybody. Um, I don't even know when this was. It was about six months ago or US it was Open last year last at US, year. Open. US Open. So April. So okay. yeah. Yeah. Mid US Open. Yeah. Okay. Almost a year ago. All right, almost a year ago. So it was the grit. Okay. So that was, that was the very first. And again, it makes sense, right? We're playing with a very hard surface relatively and to create spin. I always tell my students and stuff like that when I'm the spin really doesn't come. It comes from the paddle, but your technique is really the most important thing. But Let's talk about the grit. Obviously, the rougher it is, it makes sense. That's going to grip the ball and going to apply more spin. So what do you see? Obviously, right now there's a test out there. that, And, and let's talk about the what, what is that test called, that, the device? Stare it, uh, stare it surface roughness reader. Yeah. And, right. and your man Tracy in there, he obviously has that. He tests all the paddles in there, um, making, making sure they're legal and stuff um, after he fixes them. Um, but like, what is, uh, what is that process like? And then we, we, you know, you talked about this new process that, um, maybe the PPA or, or something is going to, to implement. Sure. All right. So surface roughness, uh, was the big issue last year. Yeah. Right. And it's, um, like you said, uh, be, being able to generate more spin than an opponent that has a paddle with less surface roughness. Yeah. So is it a fair playing field, especially if there's a standard in place? So, um, I think the, the cause of it, if I were to guess, was nothing nefarious. It was not somebody out there trying to press the limits. I don't believe that. I don't think any pro was out there measuring their own paddles and saying, mm -hmm. um, it has a USA pickleball approved sticker, but uh, lucky me, mine, mine's going to be, you know, twice as yeah. you know, rough as, as this other one that, you know, my, my uh, sponsor sent me, I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one over. I don't think that's what's happening. I think yeah. it's, um, you know, the, uh, I think it's more of the fact that they weren't testing. I think the idea is mm. you go through the motions and you order your paddles and you know that the six that the factory sends you that says, here's your six samples, we've tested them. They're going to be compliant with the surface roughness standard. Go ahead and send them in. You know, you're in a good shape at that point. 
Wow. What's your follow-up, right? Do you have a third party that is going to test every single paddle coming off the production line before it's put in someone's hands? Probably not. You're probably going to, you know, have the packaging and wrapping and you're hoping for the best because the six that you sent in for mm. approval got approved and it's not your problem, right? So that I see the future there, right? We need a right. the USAP or somebody, whoever the organization is, they need a third party just constantly testing batches then. Well, is that I, the solution? Yeah, Paddlegate 1.0 was focused on one company, CRBN, right? And yeah. and I'm basing you know some of this, um, some of my opinion is just based on their response, which I thought was incredibly professional yeah. at the time and the way they handled their business and made a comeback this year. But I believe their reaction to um, their paddles being removed from the approved list of pickleball paddles was to uh, put a serial number on yeah. each batch yeah. so that they could run smaller batches, have a third party test those batches as far as the, the surface roughness reading, and then uh, have confidence that in anybody's hands, those paddles were going to be in compliance with a USA pickleball standard. Right. I don't know if other companies are going to those lengths. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that paddles that come through our shop, you know, we'll put on you know, a new edge guard will fix handles cracks. We'll, yeah. we'll measure it. And, you know, some are in compliance, some aren't. I don't, yeah. again, I, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's, it's an issue of trying to skirt the rules. I think it's just an issue of mass production of a product and, yeah. you know, lack of oversight. So I'm a big fan of where USA Pickleball is headed. I think you, you, you brought it up that the stare at reader, it's only a few hundred bucks, right? In the last year, there's the big controversy is when you have folks trying to do the test at home. Yeah. Even some paddle companies went out and, you know, tried to prove that their paddles were in compliance by doing the, the, yeah. the, the stare test and having it, uh, you know, the average of six different, you know, clockwork readings. Yeah. And, and basically real quick on the yeah. stare test, it, it basically, um, it calculates the, it's just counting the grip, basically. It's the, not the distance the between distance. a peak and a valley okay. at one point. Right. Right. Got it. So, and you can have uh, different readings um, at different yeah. points on the paddle, right? Here in the center or on top. And you can also have different readings depending on which direction the reader is facing. Yeah. Hmm. So, there's a whole rhyme and reason to it. But yeah. again, I, I, my point is the stare reader is not terribly expensive. It's a few hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's a thousand. The, the technology that USA Pickleball and Carl Smith is going to be adopting is yeah. much more expensive and accurate. I think it's something to do with laser graphing and, okay. but it's, um, my understanding is that it has, it, it typically it's done in a lab setting. Hmm. So the, I believe the, the comments that I heard today from Connor Pardo is at least with the PPA, they're trying to figure out a way to bring lab testing on tour so that you can, you know, give everybody confidence that their paddles are yeah. in compliance. Well, I was talking to someone like today about, you know, it, there's, there's, they got to figure out a way that they can test any paddle just a couple minutes before a match very easily. If they can't do that, then, you know, like, like right now, like, right. Um, whatever the whole controversy about carbon not being banned right now, but like, as, as DJ young said, like they can, they can take your paddle and test it after the tournament. Right. Uh, you take on the risk as a player to play with any paddle, right? Right. Yeah. Like and they brought it up that a different paddle, not a player's paddle, but a different paddle did not pass inspection. And so it was, it was something that was on radar and they said, just play at your own risk. And, uh, you know, yeah. I didn't actually pay attention to what he actually played with that tournament. But, you know, again, it, not surprising that you have a, a different um, production issue mm -hmm. coming to light and um you know if it provides an advantage folks raising their hand and yeah. saying I, I think there's something off here so I, I believe if we want to dive into kind of paddlegate 2.0 i can give you uh you know some uh, some background from yeah. uh you know who i think the, the the hero of all this tracy walsh i can let him say it in his own words uh, -huh. uh you know how you at home can test for delaminated paddles. And okay. Maybe before you press play, do you want to kind of give the, uh, you know, the what the feedback from the top players was yeah. about raising their hand and saying, "I think something's off with this paddle." Yeah. Um, yeah. So before that, we're gonna jump right into paddle Paddlegate 2.0. Okay. But I do, 
Uh, so viewers, stay tuned. But I do want to talk about um, the grid on paddles. Okay, so right here, we got SLK, um, control, great paddle, Selkirk. Um, now, let's talk about the grid because you mentioned something about there's types of, there's, there's, a, there's a way that they can apply it, right? There's only a couple ways that, that grid is applied. And what are they again? You have applied grit, applied typically grit? on a paddle like this, of like a fiberglass. So is that, a, okay, is it a spray? Like what does applied mean? Mm, that's a trade secret. Okay, and, and <laughs> it's, it's different materials. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, the equivalent of powder or sand. But okay, it's, it's, it's powder a, or it's sand. A, Got it. It's a, uh, anything that would have a rough property to it, right? And then what is the other way of applying grit? Or, or just the, basically the, the, what the material Where you is. go to the material itself where the material has an inherent uh, surface roughness. So the raw carbon fiber being at that thickness is yeah. where kind of the industry testing is kind of focused everybody on that thickness as right. approved. Well, you know what's crazy to me is like with Paddlegate 1, like I, I actually had like a, a carbon demo over at Legacy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, like I don't know why, but it kind of just intrigued me. And I was like, well, let, let me look at this really quickly. And I mean, I'll be honest, it hasn't been demoed that much. And like when I looked at the grit comparison from that to like one of the new Yolas, I was like, so you're telling me this Yola is legal, but these carbons aren't? Yeah. So I was just like kind of thrown off because there was this huge thing last year with, with carbon and how they were, their paddles were way too gritty and how everyone felt they yeah. were unfair. And I'm looking at it now and I'm going, this thing's not even gritty compared to yeah. what's out on the market so, right now. So yeah, two things. It didn't make sense to me like what Caden's saying, like if you just feel it with your fingers. And I know it's not a real test, but it's not that big of a difference. And secondly, I guess my question would be, it's just material. Like there's no material in the world that is going to be applied or anything that's not going to wear over time, right? Everything's going to wear. Right. Right? Right. And the reason for the trade secret comment is simply that I, I believe that, you know, paddle companies are going to start differentiating themselves based on an applied grit, right? I think that's probably where the, the next generation of paddles right. is going to come from is can you um, accurately apply a legal grit. Legal, legal grit, grit that will last. That will last. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's right. all we're talking about here. Cause yeah. like, it's like paddle companies are going to experiment with different things, but as yeah. long as we have a legal limit, they're going to push the limit and who, what paddle company can make the, gr make the applied grit last the longest. Right. If you were here a year ago, Jordan, I mean, this business would be so easy. <laughs> Man, I need to be a consultant or something, huh? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's paddle gate one, 1. 1.0. And what do you think? So, I mean, has that kind of been resolved like right now, I guess, because of the, the, the stare, what is it? Stare test. Stare test. Uh, no, I, I mean, like I said, I, I think it's, um, ignorance is bliss, right? You get your six paddles that are, you know, from the factory are going to pass inspection. You send yeah. them in with confidence. You get that approval. You know, like I said, we, we, um, you know, paddle fix provides the service, but we also go ahead and test these paddles. And, you know, again, the paddles that come through are not from, you know, it's not these top pros sending us paddles they want to play with for the next three months. It's your rec players that want to, you know, they found a paddle they love, they saved up for it, they paid for it, they don't want to buy another $200 paddle. And so they pay 50 bucks to Tracy and he, uh, you know, he puts it back together in a way that mm -hmm. will give it some longevity and also have it play the way that the, you know, hopefully that paddle company intended it to play. Right. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, thank Yeah. Good information, Brett. We're going to hop right into Paddlegate 2.0. Yeah. Obviously there's been several podcasts. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, delamination. That's the big thing now. I didn't even know what the heck that was. I can guess cause I know what lamination is. There you go. Um, <laughs> now if delamination is the opposite or the lack of lamination, then I, I don't know. Is that, well, why don't you explain what, what that is to the viewers or, or should we just, should we just tee in the video? Here? Let's, let's let our hero take it away. All right, here we go. So right now we're going to pull up a video. I hear a lot of oh, oh, wow. That was quick. Uh, okay. All right. Well do your thing, Tracy. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to pull up a video of your partner, Tracy, um, talking about uh, so in this video, what is, is he going to, is this specifically about a uh, delamination? He's, he's going right? to give you, you know, his, his thoughts on, um, 
what delamination is, I'll tell you that the controversy last week was that a delaminated paddle, which has a separation between the surface and the core material, was providing an advantage to those players, right? So a few weeks ago, you know, some companies were riding a high and saying, we've got the most powerful paddle out there. We're, you know, we're body bagging people from the baseline, cool social media posts, very cool stuff, right? Right. You know, now it's on more of a low, right? The, the reason for those powerful paddles was delamination and, you know, the trampoline effect that it was generating. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting how people talk about it as a competitive advantage and a, um, you know, almost like a, a cheating scandal. Right. When, yeah. in my opinion, last year, a delaminated paddle was part of a bad batch yeah. as far as factory production. This year, sitting here today, I think it was part the of the best a bad paddle batch. on the market. <laughs> no, I, I, in my opinion, I think it's still part of a bad batch, right? It's, right. it's, it, it won't pass a, um, uh, a test as far as, um, you know, putting pressure on the, the paddle face and, and testing for that rebound, but it's, um, it's a factory flaw, right? And I, I think the way that folks are talking about that and how they're going to go about fixing it is very interesting to me because we see delaminated paddles yeah. all the time. And I'll tell you, it's not as simple uh, a fix as okay. a lot of folks are saying, but again, right. let's yeah. not let's, steal let's, Tracy's yeah. thunder here. Let's, let's tee up the video. Oh, hold on. Got to mention one thing, right? One of the answers to this is more testing. And those testing, as you can imagine, um, you know, how in the world are we going to test for this delaminated paddle? And how can we do it on site? And what's the cost, right? And I'll mm -hmm. tell you, I think it's, um, it's pretty obvious. And so with that, now I'll let Tracy take it All away. right. All right. So Let's we're do it. right now we're pulling up a video of his partner in crime, Tracy. Um, Not crime. We're doing good. I, okay. <laughs> uh, partner in... Yeah, it was a pickleball justice. It wasn't literally. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> okay. Partner in justice. Yeah. Tracy Waldrum. Justicely. Tracy Wallstad. Wallstad. Yes, okay. All right, here we go. I hear a lot of that my panel doesn't feel the same, it doesn't sound the same, and it doesn't hit the same. Either there's not as much power as it was, or it just feels weird. Here's why. It is delaminated. So what does that mean? That means that the surface either one surface or two have separated in, in a spot of the entire surface or in a certain section of the surface has separated from the underlying core. This core is polypropylene, but so what does that mean? How do you know it, it is delaminated? Well, a number of ways. Your knuckle, take your knuckle and just pound on it, okay, and go up the paddle and you can hear a change in the sound. So this is still good, that's, that's good. In this area, the surface is still attached. Now as we go up, you're gonna hear a, a noticeable change in the sound. Oh, what's that? That is a delamination. That's good. Not good. This area is good. So right here, almost right where the sweet spot is, it is delaminated. Okay, now you can also use a pickleball. And I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the ball in a good area, and I'll hit it in the delaminated area. And this, this is why a lot of players say it sounds funny. As soon as I hear that complaint, I know it's delaminated. So here is in a good area. That is a good sound, good sound. Now here's the, the, the delaminated area. You hear that? That is a delaminated paddle. It does not sound good. So, uh, so again, delaminated area. And this is how it should sound right now. It should, it should sound like that. Because I'm hitting it in a good part of the paddle. Now again, I'm gonna go to the delaminated area. Tracy, my paddle sounds funny. What is that? Okay. Well, did you take that video? I did take that video. All right. All right. Well, Trace, in the, the future, I knew homework is pretty happen. good. I'm not going to lie. Wow. And that, by the way, that was uh, the Electrum, which was that the Electrum Pro? One? No, no, no. That was the first one. Yeah. But it's not, it, again, it's, uh, I don't know how long that player had the paddle. Yeah. 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 It, right. It, right. I don't think, you know, delamination yeah. doesn't 
automatically trigger a bad batch unless you have pros yeah. claiming a delaminated paddle because you know they are not practicing with that paddle for weeks and then be like, oh, you know what? I got something here. It's it's happening relatively wow. quickly. You know, so when when a you know a, a rec player brings something in, they may be playing with it for a year or two and yeah. you know, way past a warranty period and all yeah. that. So it, it doesn't matter if it's Electrum or anyone else. It's it's not a um well, it yeah. doesn't mean wow. anything. Well, that was a good explanation. I gotta say, Tracy looks like he worked on some aircraft yeah. like carriers or something. Yeah. Well, you know what's so you know what's funny about delamination is I actually almost signed with that new company called Vatic Pro. All right. When they came out with their paddle, I'm not gonna lie, I looked at it and I was like, this looks pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie, this looks you know better if not similar to you know what yola's making out here and when i tried it it had way more pop than like your normal 14 millimeter paddle it had way more feel than your normal 14 millimeter paddle and i thought my paddle was on crack <laughs> i mean literally i was like this paddle is absolutely insane and as i used it more that sound that tracy had just talked about really I would tell people, I'd be like, God, I don't know why, but my paddle sounds like a freaking shotgun. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Right? You should have just call it the shotgun. I, I, would be, I would go like this before I hit shots. I'd go Pff. like that. And like, it didn't make sense to me at the time. So I what I was, you didn't tell me about this. This is about your, your Vatic. Then. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But when I, when I used it, I okay. was like, dude, this is kind of insane. But like now when I look at like this video, and I used a paddle like that from like Electrum. I was like, oh man, this thing's dead. I toss it, you know? Should have sent it the paddle fix. Dude. I should have. I should. I think this was when I was living in the base still. But. Oh, there, there, you'll notice that delamination is not on our menu of services. Oh, it's not? No, we view it as a bad batch of factory flaw. So if it's within warranty, we recommend sending it uh, back to the paddle company. Oh, yeah, right. Right. Okay. We're not in the business of of trying to fix of uh, relamination. <laughs> right. Oh, that's the word. Oh, relamination. Can you relaminate my paddle, please? Yeah. I don't think that's how that works. But anyways, that's actually probably a good thing. That's probably a good thing because I feel like people are looking at delamination right now and going, "Oh, that's I, I want that." Right. <laughs> so like, and it's crazy because you look at this and you're like, oh, "Okay, so it's not that great." But when you look at all these companies who have been getting all of this kind of like shade thrown at them by players, yeah, people are looking at it and probably going, well, shoot, we should try it, right? I mean, like my dad was, used to tell me all the time, he would always say, Caden, there's no such thing as bad marketing. No such thing. What is that? And mean? well, it means whether someone is bashing your brand oh, yeah, there you or go. talking highly about your gotcha. brand. Yeah. They're about still you. marketing. Your, they're still well, talking about think, your brand. I think Carbon, that was a good thing for them. They exploded yeah. after that. Well, think about it this way. When Carbon went through Paddlegate 1.0, guess what? Everybody was just dying to try their new ones. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't know. It, maybe it was something that you mentioned where like all of these companies that are getting, let's say, not I wouldn't say crapped on, but talked about by Ben, Annalie, People Leia. People raising their hands. People yeah, are going, huh? Something's different. So there's a there is an advantage to this paddle. So so real quick, back to two point the delamination part. Yeah, we're talking about what is the advantage of having a delaminated paddle? Is it just because it's separated? It, it's supposed to give more pop. Is that is that like the main thing? I mean, at the highest levels, I think there's a few advantages, right? It's the idea that you get a trampoline effect, right? Um, you know, a little bit more power. I would argue that a delaminated paddle is going to um, I would be think, more inconsistent. Yeah, I would think right. the touch but, and the resets are not the same. But when you think about hand battles, yeah, and right. the difference Shoot, of somebody yeah. with you know, you talk about fast hands and the elite players and mm -hmm. the ability to get two inches behind a ball and going forward versus four inches behind. Mm -hmm. Well, some of those players aren't able to get four inches behind a ball before they go forward. They're only able to get two. But if they are Got you know, it. getting the same pop as the folks with faster hands, all of a sudden they're jumping up the ranks and beating people that, Different game. you know, previously they weren't able to beat. So again, I, I get why they raise their hand. What's interesting, and I love the conversation between the both of you about how to break down this issue. It's different for the pros than it is for yeah. a rec player. Yep. And I'll tell you, a delaminated paddle is a 
it's a it's a faulty pedal it will break it the, yeah. it'll crack the surface will crack because that's what happens when you keep hitting a ball right. where there's air between a paddle face and yeah. the paddle surface is that it is going to lead to a broken paddle right um it's not uh maybe for a short window of time you feel there's an advantage and i think at the pro level when they're using paddles for a very short window of time um they make the most of that window but it, you know you put this paddle and if everybody's ordering these paddles to get an advantage they are um, you know, they're doing so, you know, at their own risk because again, it's a delaminated paddle. Right. Yeah. I would say, yeah, when I use that Vatic, the, the, the lifespan of it wasn't crazy long, but like, well, let me ask you this, the Vatic, when you bought it to wear it, it delaminated. What was the time frame there? Do you know? Month and a half. Oh, wow. but then again, you got to remember something. I hit a lot of balls, not just playing, but teaching as well. So like, yeah. I would say. I had it for about a month and a half. Um, and I would say the prime of that paddle was probably at like three weeks for, to a month. Okay. And then kind of towards the end of it, like it started to kind of lose its grit. No, the, you, you're, um, you're, you're mistaken. The prime one has got delaminated. That's when you had the most power. Yeah, no, I know, I know, but I, I had the most power. I just didn't like I I lost a lot of grit already, but like it was still super jumpy. Yeah, yeah, I got like, you. Like I played in uh, that Legacy Championship at the end of November last year, or maybe beginning of December, and that paddle was so freaking poppy. Like I don't, I don't even know really how I used it or controlled it, but like, yeah. Well, you I, know, it's yeah. what's interesting is that benefit of the doubt. You know, I, I like these smaller companies, the newer companies. I like the claims they make, right? If true, that's a really cool thing to be able to offer more power. And you know what? If a new paddle plays a certain way, then benefit of the doubt, maybe they do have some cool design um, yeah. advantages that they've put in. Unfortunately, in this instance, it's uh, just, you know, it's a bad batch that they will work through. But if you have a paddle that plays the way it's intended, and mm -hmm. it's everything secure. The edge guard keeps every, all the layers together. Um, you know, it, yeah. these companies are going to jump back right in the face of the big companies because they, you know, they believe in their product. So yeah. I, I don't think they're gone for long. I don't know if they're going to be gone at all, but I, yeah. I, I fully expect if, if they believe in their product, mm -hmm. that they're not. They'll uh, make some changes. Yeah. Right. They'll, I think the, the comments from the companies were, or maybe it was, Maybe it was some of the folks that do the testing and, and also have podcasts, but they were yeah. in, you know, in communication with their sources and, you know, they're going to, the paddle companies are going to try new glue and better glue, heat resistant glue, because the, this right. specific paddle, I guess, was a thermo form where it was pressed. Uh, the materials were pressed under high temperatures. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, okay. So on that, right. Cause yeah, the whole, the whole paddle gate 2.0 delamination, Ben Johns called out some companies there. There was a lot of tweets back to Ben. Um, <laughs> there were. And on his, well, on their side, on his ignorance. So what, what do you think the uh, the solution, and, and we saw that, I think it was Pickleball Studios. I think it was them where it was, they were talking about what was the solution. And it was like the glue or more glue or whatever. And and we talked off off podcast about that that may or may not be the solution. So, what are your thoughts on? Okay, just apply more glue, and hopefully that works. Oh, it, it, that might work. It's a nice talking point to move on from an issue and recognizing that they were not intending to put out a delaminated paddle or a paddle that delaminated quickly. I think it's, um, you know, it's too easy to say we'll just put more glue on, or you know, we'll try the heat resistant glue this time. I, I think a lot of this is you're talking about a mass produced product. Yeah, it is the variation in the assembly process in, in china right like yeah. all the paddles like i mean you know there's some you know selkirk there's some paddles companies that are still made in u.s but like pretty right. much is china overseas yeah or any yeah. other like besides china or or the, the paddles made in other countries too or is it just china i'm right? aware of a few other countries okay you know, india taiwan okay um but you know 95 percent is, is it neo Pipo actually in india i don't know okay i don't know you know i don't see a lot of neo Pipo paddles come through yeah um, oh you ha i have not so maybe i'll have to bring you one yeah just to take it apart normally we buy new paddles when they come out just to take it oh, apart and okay. especially if you know we see some cool social media claims of you know this paddle is 
you know, got it all power, consistency, accuracy, spin, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get our hands on it and take a look. Yeah. yeah. N- Neo Peepo is actually like one of those brands that, I mean, personally, I would never use, but I probably most commonly see when I teach. Sure. Yeah. Just because it's cheap. You can get it on Amazon. Wait, you and see a lot of those? ton of them. I, I see, see I zero, see dude. I really? haven't seen anybody. Yeah. The only person I but saw I, playing with it was I Frank Anthony teach, Davis. I also teach beginner <laughs> one clinics for like people who like oh, okay. literally are coming out to play pickleball for the, like the first time ever. Dude, there's got to be a Neo, Neo Peepo rep around here. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what it is. So, yeah. so I brought some pictures of you know things that, that we get to see in the workshop. I okay. think it might cool. be interesting just to show your audience. All right. So we're going to hop into some pictures at the factory, the pickle fix, pickle oh. fix, paddle fix. Factory pickle, here. Pickle fix. <laughs> you so, go to that uh, first one. All right. So what, what are we? Okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best here. But what are we looking at here, Brett? So you're looking at a uh, an edge guard that was cracking, right? Uh, you know, the edge guard a little bit more plastic than rubber. Uh, you're looking at you know some foam that's put under the edge guard, right? Any anybody that is this considered thera theraformed or what does it get thera body? I don't think so. I think this is just pressed. Okay. And then you put in foam in on the, the edges to reduce um, vibration, yeah, yeah. which is a pretty cool idea. But some of the foam, some of the way it's applied, too much, too little, the wrong one, you know, in combination with your materials choices for mm-hmm. an edge guard, which is a, a cheap piece of, uh, piece of plastic. But, you know, sometimes a factory may choose a cheaper version of that plastic, right? Is it plastic so, or rubber? Is that the same? Yeah, it, it, I, in describing it more. Okay the ones that are cracking, especially here in Arizona where it's so dry Mm. would be, have more plastic properties than rubber properties. Right. So again, this is a cause that, you know, once the edge guard is not holding things together, it it could be prone to delamination. It doesn't mean that this one is, but that's just, you know, a picture as an example of something we'd see. And this is one of the biggest things that you guys fix, right? An edge guard, right. We try to keep the, again, we want, we like the company, we like the paddle cups. We want to keep players playing with their favorite paddles. We're not convincing them to move away. Yeah. We're, you know, they send us their paddle. They say, we want to keep playing with it and we, we bring it back to them. Okay. So that was a little edge guard mishap there. What do we got here? What are we looking at here, Brad? Oh, so so this one, we, uh, you know, that's honeycomb, right? It is honey. It's polypropylene honeycomb, right? You'll see it's a little bit darker on, uh, Jordan on your side than on my side. It just means that uh, on the piece that he's holding up in the air, yeah, that he's peeling back, you'll see that the adhesive was either, um, you know, disproportional on that side versus towards the center where the um, the screwdriver is, uh-huh. where it's a little bit lighter. That's where the delamination occurred. And again, we don't know if there's a new paddle or a, a two-year-old paddle. You know, we don't know how many times a week this player played with it. Yeah. But, you know, there's two ways that this could have led to delamination. Either it's, you know, the adhesive wasn't evenly covered throughout or when it was in a Got press, it. that press didn't, per, you know, apply even it. pressure. Got it. Right. right. So that would be another factory issue. Again, if it's delaminated, factory issue, send it back. You know, these things are under warranty. Right. It happens. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one. All right. What do we... These are, are these, what would you call these little honeycomb things? This is the honeycomb core. This wow. is what happens when you actually take the honeycomb core out of a paddle. Wow. Okay. So real quick, everyone who has, knows about honeycomb, uh, honeycomb has been around for decades. Yeah. What the, what the heck is it? What is it made out of? What is honeycomb? What does that even mean? I think it's the shape, right? It's that uh, hexagonal. Is it, is, it plas- is it a form of plastic? plastic? It kind of looks like straws, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Like you took straws and glued them together and cut them to whatever width um, you wanted the... Kind of like a beehive. Yeah. 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 But it is, it's like more or less plastic then. Yeah. But you can see that playing and hitting over and over and over, these, you know, this this honeycomb core is pretty degraded, right? Right. Even if it had adhesive on it, you know, to begin with, this player over time has, you know, really put the paddle to, you know, through its paces. So it... um, Now, is it the shape... Right of the honeycomb, like it's a cylinder, right? And it looks, it looks like a lot of cylinders back. A little back. bit more. The new right. ones are hexagonal. If you go back okay. a picture, you'll see that right. hexagonal. Okay, shape. but it's like a it could a, a straw. We can cut up a straw or a hex straw, whatever. Sure. But is it that shape that compresses a little bit? Like why that shape? 
Why not just have a car- strong shape? Why not just have carbon fiber, just layers of carbon fiber? Like why, why this? I think that's what Gearbox does. Oh, is that what Gearbox does? Yeah, I think does? if we, I don't, I didn't bring a picture, but I'm pretty sure if we were to, you know, <clears throat> saw open a Gearbox, it looks different. It, it's not a honeycomb yeah. core. It's got, um, I don't know. We'll have to look that up separately, but. Well, in Gearbox, I mean, they're proud of that, I think, right? They, I mean, they talk about. They're the first to not do honeycomb. Yeah, they're right. One of the first. Yeah, they're the only paddle company that is um, going out of their way for players not to buy new paddles. Yeah. Right? They well, they're indestructible, but. I bragging thought... about their paddle from 2016, yeah. and, you know, they had the original. I, I mean, I used to be yeah. um, sponsored by Gearbox and met the team, and, mm-hmm. you know, they really, they stand behind their products. They, yeah. they really promote durability and. Yeah. You know, they, I, I think they actually, they're, they're a big time racquetball yeah, yes, they are. company. And so I, I think they may have uh, their own factory or more control yeah. over the factory that, that Rafa's, Rafa's a good guy. Shout, yeah. out, shout out to Rafa. Oh, and no. he, um, they are indestructible, but you lose the touch. That's why I didn't like them. <laughs> well, actually, have you, have you ever tried their original um, SST, like GX5? No. It's no. ridiculous. It's crazy how good that paddle is. Yeah, really? Yeah, so you know Victor, right? Oh, Victor right, from, from Legacy. From Legacy, yes. yeah. yeah. He uses that paddle, and he swears by that paddle, and he is freaking really good with that paddle. And, like, actually at one point um, when I wasn't sponsored, I said, hey, let me uh, let me borrow one of these for just a week or so. I think I ended up using it for, like... You liked it, huh? Yeah, a few months. I used yeah. it for a few months, and then finally I was like, okay, well, hey, like, maybe I'll... You know, look into some uh, maybe like a gearbox sponsorship, and they were like, "Oh yeah, you know, we want we want our players to use our newer products." And I was like, "Okay, well, well, I'll, I'll give them a go." And and it wasn't. I'm not gonna way. lie. I tried those like those new, not not the new, new, new ones. Yeah, yeah. But like the, you know, the the new control and the power series. You know, where they were just like GX5, and they came out with that GX6 series where they were like red, orange, blue, yeah. green, and they were completely different pedals. Wow. So wow. I was like, okay, maybe. Yeah. No, I brought my paddles here oh. that I've played with, right? I, so I went from Babolat and just oh, you know, from a surface roughness, I wore through the surface, the, the applied grit. Yeah. Right. Um, Those are kind of like the Franklins where. Right. Quick, quicker than one. I really loved the paddle, but I would, you know, I was abusing their warranty po- policy and they made clear that I was, you know. That you were doing that. Was, that. <laughs> now, now, not to go back to Paddlegate 1.0, sure. but okay, this is my personal feeling and I, I opened it up where because you know obviously I'm an instructor I teach a lot of people Caden you instruct yeah the the grit to me even if you take something like just fiberglass and then you compare it with a new carbon and new yola yeah you can tell a difference but like to me it's not like it's we're not talking about sandpaper here you know what I mean it's yeah. still it's still way less than that so to me it's it's not that big of an issue to me. You wouldn't I don't think. Know. Do you do you feel that way? <laughs> no, I, I I can tell you it's um for my game and to you know again just another banger out there. Yeah. It's room for error, right? So if I'm hmm. playing someone in singles and I'm aiming, you know, two three inches over the net, four inches. It's the top five spin. inches, yeah. right? Top spin to Got bring it, it down. Yeah. You can only hit the ball as hard as you have enough spin to bring it back down. Yeah. Right. And so if I'm aiming you know, three, four inches over the net and my opponent is hitting the ball just as hard and is aiming six inches, 12 inches, 18 inches over the net. And it's Mm. still coming down. I'm going to start playing with whatever they're playing with. Right. Right. It's just an obvious misfactor is that I know that from my background playing tennis and having a, a two handed forehand, right. I would hold. Wow. Two handed forehand. So I would hold top hand here, almost a a full Western. Right. So I know hitting a one handed, you know, forehand and I, 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 you know, I, I hit pretty hard, right? But I'm generating a ton of spin because I'm I'm holding a grip that's more extreme than everyone else. I'll tell you that now on pickleball, what are your Eastern grip, right? No, Warren? I I don't change grip at all. I just keep it Western. Yeah, I gotta see that. I gotta see your backhand. I gotta, I gotta see your forehand. I don't hit backhand. Is it really wet? Show that. me your grip. I'm holding the paddle up here. Oh, you uh, are. Yeah, so that's how you hit your forehand. Pretty close face. So I generate a ton of spin, right? So catch is very important to me. And um, wow. if I'm playing somebody that is hitting hard and hitting higher over the net, it's, um, you know, odds are they've got, you know, they've got you know, some advantage that yeah. I don't. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So let's jump into this next pick. What do we got here, Brett? 
What do we got going on? Oh, so this is just you take the edge guard off. This is what it looks like. Sometimes when you take the edge guard off, that uh, surface is going to be, you know, uh, you know. That's geared. the that's the laminate, or he it just, is the laminate. He's just, he's right. just pulling it off. We got this paddle in right. for a, an edge guard replacement, <laughs> and of course, you know, you test for, you know, any other deficiencies, and in this case, you know, we found delamination. So we helped this customer go back to their, you know, their paddle company and yeah. say. Hey, look, we have a customer here. We found delamination. Wow. You know, uh, what can you do for them? Right. Sometimes they'll send a replacement. Sometimes if it's after warranty, they'll still send a replacement. Um, most times if it's after warranty, they'll send a discount code for a new paddle. And since yeah. we don't um, recommend fixing delamination because you'd be, um, we could, but you're, you're adding weight, you're adding adhesive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, if for us, we, basically we move on from that paddle. Ball. Yeah. We right. just move on. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's a little de- de- lamb there. Uh, last pick here. Ooh, Ooh, that's cool. It looks like a heart. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they're completely <laughs> delaminated. Sometimes they just fall off, right? Oh, as soon as you take the edge guard take off? Take the edge guard off. Sometimes you just kind of peel it back and they come all the way off, right? Wow. Wow. So you want to talk about why we got... What is this one right here? What paddle? I can't tell you. Oh, which okay. is why I gave you this picture. <laughs> nice. Right? Um, but I'll tell you, go into a tournament and... and um, it's definitely not a Selkirk, I'll tell you that. Definitely not. No, yeah. no, no. Team Selkirk. They, uh, this would not happen. Um, I'll tell you when I first met Tracy, before I, I told him about the, uh, the idea of hey, taking the mad paddler concept and, yeah. and actually providing a service for players, right. With paddle fix and telling them, you know, if you do this right, you're going to know more about the paddle industry than the paddle industry itself. You're, you're going to be the guy. And, yeah. um, I, I think he liked that story. I told him and we moved forward, but, um, before we started it, we, we met at a tournament and we went around to the new paddles that were being sold at, at that event. And, you know, we would go around and we'd just kind of just push up lightly on the edge guard. And, you know, I think it was just over half the paddles had a loose edge guard before yeah. any of them. Or even being sold. Right. Yeah. Jeez. Which, you know, for us, it was, it, it wasn't surprising. It was surprising to you know, go and, and test it. But, you know, these are expensive paddles. I'd recommend them if you're going to go buy a paddle, you know, go out and go to your local retailer that you like and, yeah. and give them the local business, but also, you know, just check out the paddle, right? Because right. one of the obvious things is it, at least a sandwiched honeycomb paddle that has an edge guard, right? Not a, a gearbox yeah. or a, a hot mold or whatever these are. Yeah. Um, the idea is that, you know, sometimes the, you know, the folks that are installing edge cards aren't, you know, installing it necessarily the way that that company is hoping. So you just, you know, you, you just do your due diligence and buy the one that's secure right. and uh, know that a paddle will play better longer if it is all held together. Well, yeah. quality control, it seems like that's one of the main things that we're talking about here. Our overseas, I would just guess it's, it's very, very hard to do that. Right. Like I'm sure it's a lot easier, like, like maybe companies like Selkirk and some other companies that still at least put their paddles together and here in the U S that, that quality control is much easier. Right. I think you can look at a paddle company's warranty and quickly size up what control they have or don't have. Um, the, the longer warranty, the replacement warranty is, is what you're really looking for. Yeah. Um, I think it's 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 a tough to run a business if you have paddles being sent back to you. Not only from a, yeah. a cost standpoint, but also from just a brand damage of, you know, folks talking about what they're using and what they're not using and why. Right. So it's in everyone's interest that um, if a flaw or a defect or a paddle is coming apart, that you know that customer is able to have, you know, a um, uh, a a positive outcome, right? A positive experience going through that customer service process. Yeah. But you did bring up a good point of, you know, why aren't there more, you know, uh, made in America paddles, right? Because it's expensive. It's very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But would you pay for a more expensive paddle? Heck yeah, you would. I think anybody would. If you had a paddle that played like some of the, the claims that are being made, that you know you it was a guarantee yeah. <sighs> and everyone, why not yep you know everyone talks about selkirk labs too about how expensive it is but you know hey they make them here and i'm pretty sure it's a lifetime warranty right you get it back hey before i was sponsored by them i bought one 
Yeah. Yeah. And I said, I can't buy another unless I'm sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But uh, Smart yeah. man. Smart man. No, they've been a great team. Yeah. I yeah. will all attest to here. Yeah. No, no, 100%. Well, I, I would say one of the biggest topics that kind of dropped in Pickleball that a pro put out and of course a bunch of pros responded to and then of course it got blasted on Facebook and Instagram and all that was what's more of an advantage paddles or steroids I mean I already know my answer but I I would love to hear your answer because obviously you know a lot about paddles Um, I'm not saying you know a lot about steroids, but I think we all kind of know what steroids do. We don't know. He may. This is what seven years of CrossFit looks like, guys. (laughs) No steroids. None. All right. Tell us what you think about that. Oh, no, it's uh, for this sport. You know, I don't know. I don't think anybody's using steroids. I think this is this is the PPA. Well, we talked we talked about PEDs, not bulk up steroids, but 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 for endurance. Yeah, I think this is pickleball figuring out what it's going to look like when it grows up, which is yeah. folks trying to find an advantage at everything and, and getting ahead of it, having a policy, yeah. having expectations of the players that are representing the brand. So I think it's the whole conversation around PEDs uh, is, it, in my opinion, it, it, I don't know if there's claims now or not, but you know, I, I think any sport that has reputation on the line needs to cover all its bases. So that's what I think about PEDs. I think paddle technology and um, the opportunity yeah. to put together a high-end paddle that is going to perform the way that, you know, by mistake, some of these are, um, but do yeah. it purposefully in the rules with materials that are consistent, that are going to, um, again, last the average player months, not yeah. weeks, not days, right? I mean, the the rumor here that we started with was, again, this is the only rumor I want to share today, which is, you know, Signature paddles that degrade quickly are not what need to be put onto the market, right? Because everyone's going to say, I've got this paddle of, you know, $150, $200. It, it's the same paddle that this player plays with. Yeah. But that's only true for the first day. Right. right. If they're not playing with their paddle on day two, then your paddle is now different than their paddle. And I think where the, the companies that are going to invest in true innovation yeah. where they're going to find an edge is going to be on um, their spin testing, right? What is a new paddle? And I don't care what they score because it's, you know, yeah. you know, it's hard to, I don't think there's a great spin test, but there's been some really cool folks that yeah. are putting stuff out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and I think their results generally are consistently showing yeah. what's up there. But what I care about is where are those same paddles after a week and a mm-hmm. month and a year? And that's how you give confidence to, you know, your base of customer to say, look, this is a paddle that we believe in that is going to perform the way that you demo it. It's going to perform like that in six months. So you, you're you only going to get better playing with this paddle, more comfortable with it. And I think that's that's going to be, a, you know, as far as the market goes, mm-hmm. it, that's not where it is today. They're trying to go for it. What is that day one? What's my score sheet look like? Right. How do I get yeah. to the top of the rank? How do I get to the top, you know, quartile of, you know, paddles that are going to be on that list that get yeah. promoted? And I, I just... I think they're missing the point that if that paddle doesn't have that RPM after a week and Mm -hmm. it goes down by half, I'll tell you, I test my paddles after I'm done using them and they're at zero. Right (laughs) Now, how do you test your spin? Right. Like, do you have a... No, no, not spin. Using the stair, the surface roughness. Oh, the surface. Oh, okay. Okay. At the sweet spot, they might still be 27s going around because I'm just curious. Wait, does it drop to literally zero? Zero. Wow. I love a team Selkirk all the way, but you know, I'll play with the 003 until, you know, it's, it's, it's smooth in the center. Um, and then I'll move on to the next, yeah. you know, well, the 003 is not known for like freaking crazy grit anyway. Right. It's a soft, it's a, it's yeah, a touch pad. Again, now yeah. you put that in my hands, I'm still going to swing as hard as I can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Put the softest paddle in the, in the fastest. You know, the first Just... six months I played pickleball, I played with like the equivalent of a junior paddle. And I had no idea. I believe wait, it. Wait, what junior paddle? It was Which like one? an Onyx Evoke teardrop, and I loved it. I physically could but not. That was, the, that's not a junior paddle. It's, it it's is a, an inch shorter than every other paddle on the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's not made for juniors, though. It's well, just No paddles are made for juniors. <laughs> no, they <laughs> have one. They have, some, they have some now. Yeah, well, uh, that's where we need to go. But yeah. I'll tell you, 
I couldn't hit the ball past the baseline and I loved it. So the first six months of me playing this oh, sport okay. was taking cuts with this paddle that, you know, it, it was, you know, swing as hard as you want. And then I quickly moved to bab a lot cause I, you know, was hitting the ball harder. And then I went to gearbox, which, you know, as you can imagine the evolution of somebody that just wants to swing hard. Yeah. I just went out and found the hardest paddle I could find. Yeah. There you go. And gearbox. then I started learning right. more and more about, you know, what I wanted out of a paddle. And I went from the, one of the thinnest paddles at 11 millimeters yep. right, to one of the softest paddles at 20 millimeters yeah. with the uh, 003. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, I think players are over time going to find what fits their game. Yeah. For and, sure. You know, the variety of paddles and having these paddle companies come out with new stuff. Yeah. I want to, you know, keep it coming. Right. Well, oh. what, yeah, go ahead. No, it, it, it's, it's true. I mean, you have to kind of figure out what paddle fits you. I think, uh, I mean, personally, for those people who, you know, oh, Ben Johns has a new signature paddle, I'm going to go get that. I mean, just for me, I tell my students all the time, don't buy a paddle unless you've used it, you know, because if you don't know anything about that paddle or what it's going to do to help you out, then you're basically just throwing away 200 bucks, Yeah, you know? And like, that was one thing that I took a while to figure out because I personally, I have no bracket background at all. So coming into pickleball, I was like, I don't really know what I want in a pickleball. I just know, uh, in a pickleball, in a pickleball paddle, I just know when I play well and I know when I don't play well, Yeah, yeah. you know? And so learning over time, like there was a point where I wanted something a little bit poppier. There was a point where I wanted something softer so I could feel like I could hit the ball a little bit more. I, I mean, I've gone back and forth and back and forth over the last yeah, me too. four and a half years, five years of playing pickleball, mm, yeah. you know? And it's crazy how I feel like we haven't even tapped into what the pickleball paddle market could be. Well, again, because of our guidelines, so going to the grid, there's a limit on that. So we're, we're just talking about the longevity of that. Right. There's a limit. And then on the, here, here's a question that I have for both of you, actually, what do you guys think about this? Because hmm. the delamination del is the biggest thing. The trampoline effect. Yep. Power, ultimate power. These guys are seeing it. Oh, you, you know, it's, there's a defect. There's, so there's going to be a point to where, um, you know, paddles may without delamination. What if they get that powerful? You know what I mean? How there's got to be a test at that point. Like, God, did you you understand what this, my my question? Gonna hire you? <laughs> no, but I'm saying. No, oh, I'm serious. No, but but is... then there has to be another test on on what is the most that a power. Uh, what is the most oh, power? See. What's the most power that, that a paddle could hold. generate? Right. Because then no, then you start wearing safety gear, right? It, it's, <laughs> no, it, you that, let the game get so, faster and faster. Yeah, you to, do like high lie where they're wearing like you know. Yeah, but it's, it's got to go out and. I know it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. But, Hockey I mean, I, I, you look at a game like tennis, okay? We both come from tennis, yeah. right? There's, from what I'm aware of, there's, but I don't even think there's rules anymore on on t on rackets, right? On, on strings, like, like is there, there's really- There were some strings that, I think they were called spaghetti strings that were okay. banned and they were not, um, you know, the, I don't know anything about it, but I know they were called spaghetti strings and they but, were- But yeah, but my off. point is you hear nothing about illegal rackets. I, don't, I just think that there's just, that's not a thing. No, they um, set the standards for length and um, I think that you, they do have some, I, I know for any governing body, they have to have standards for what's allowed, but you're right, they don't have the same controversy. Pickleball has a lot of controversy. There's so much controversy. And, yeah, it's and, ridiculous. And, yeah. I, guess, I guess in your mind now, the question that I just- um, said to you obviously there's the so let's just go to the um remember the dollar bill test or what what is that real quick can you explain that one so this is something that's that's new to what um i've seen as a reaction to yeah uh delamination and a trampoline effect um how usa pickleball is going to be addressing that i believe they're going to be putting a weight and it's a, an instrument it's a big expensive instrument but it, it basically puts a weight of six yeah. pounds onto the, the paddle surface and that paddle surface is not allowed to bend more than the width of a dollar bill, right? <laughs> yeah. So you think about- Which is you think real, about yeah. pressing down with six pounds of force, this can't bend, right? And yeah. so this isn't bending at all. Yeah. You know, the honeycomb, as long as it's not, you know, degraded, you're not, yeah. or delaminated, yeah. you're, you're hoping. In, but then you get into this paddle and for the life of me, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out- Let's hold that up here, the vice. Uh, this one. Shout out to vice, kind of. Well, this is- 
Diadem. Diadem. So, Diadem. Yep. Yeah. So they came out with this concept paddle. Yeah. I think at the end of last year, early this year, they did a whole Vegas countdown to the launch. It was a pretty cool what's way to launch. Yeah. What's crazy is they they marketed it as not legal already, not approved, and a lot of people. I see people playing with this. Yeah. No. They've they've it's got crazy. A, I didn't know why it was illegal, right? Because I I hadn't seen one, played with one, right? I didn't see people on the courts playing with one until just recently. But I called the owner and I asked him. I said, "Hey, can I can I buy a paddle off you?" And uh -huh. he sent me one, and um, I went out, played with it. It's wild. Like the wait, yeah. Let's get your assessment. Is it really is? Does it make a big difference? Before I tell my assessment, I looked at the comments about this. Yeah, and it's like the uh, don't buy this basketball shoe because you're going to hit your head on the rim, right? It was like okay. that type of over yeah. the top, you know, it's illegal, but it's so illegal yeah. that you're going to hurt your friends and family by playing with yeah. this. I'll tell you, I, I, I kind of believe the hype. I think they were just like giving warnings. Like it, the- Really? Because I, so shout out to Chris Olsen on Pickleball Studio. He did a video on it. Yeah. And he said it wasn't in his hand, what, what he can test. And he played several games with it. He didn't notice a, a ridiculous amount of difference in spin. It, it doesn't. No, no, I can't generate anywhere near the amount of spin oh, as I can. Okay, so we're I'm talking it's, just straight power off the paddle. Okay, so there is a trampoline effect on yeah. this. Yeah, and so you feel with your your fingers pressing oh, down, geez. it kind of feels like a. Um, I know it's it's made of foam, but it kind of feels like a uh, like a yoga mat under there. Okay. Right there's there's you can All feel right. there's gotta, something before. We got a little yoga going on here. The surface and the <laughs> doing core. some finger. I yoga. mean, yeah, it, it gives. It gives. Yeah. I guess that's my whole thing, though. Is there a point where, so there's a trampoline, but what I just asked you, like, about, I mean, they're going to have to limit power because there, there's going to be technologies in the future that can be. Total, Maybe they knew what you know? they had and they just put these holes in here, like the paddle, yeah. you know, right. the paddles are just to throw us off. But they knew the trampoline effect was what was really the, oh. the special sauce. Like, right. to be honest, I don't know how they came up with this. I think they've added some cool paint to it. Um, I can't, again, I can't, it does not help my game. I cannot play better with it. I do not generate anywhere near the amount of spin because the ball is off the paddle so fast. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. I'm, well, gonna have I kind of want to try it now. You guys but can it's dark hang outside. on to it. You guys hang on to it, play with it here, and let me know what you think. Yeah. But rarely to, again, this, again, if Paddle Fix was, and it is, it's a small business. It is always intended to be a small business to support players. Yeah. I've had some of the top players in the world ask me to create, you know, reinvent the company to serve, you know, their needs. There's a mosquito out here. Um, <laughs> you know, the the idea that you hear comments of the pros aren't playing with the factory paddles. I, I, I believe they are playing with the factory paddles. You know, I know some of the owners. I know some of the owners that sponsor players and they make sure they test the surface roughness before they send, you know, here's the paddles I want Got you it. to play with yeah. in a tournament. Um, but you know, does that, that doesn't mean that some of them aren't. It doesn't mean there's some of them aren't. It just means yeah. some of them might be less than, you know, if, if the limit is 30 micrometers on one of the, you know, one of the scales that, yeah. you know, they want their player to be playing with 27s and 28s versus a 17, 18, right? right? Uh, it doesn't mean that in that batch of paddles, there are 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, I, I'm confident that the paddles that they're sending to their pros are, you know, at least the, the company I have in mind is making sure that if that paddle is ever tested, um, it is going to be compliant. Okay, cool. All right. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Well, well, Brett, you know what? Um, one of the things that people listening and, and um, watching may not know about you, you're you're a really good player, 5-0 plus pro player yourself. I appreciate that. Thanks. And um, I would say so. I, I would concur with that yeah. statement. And I would. I guess my question to you would be, where do you see this game? So we, we talked about like kind of paddles and you can kind of work that in, but just the game in general, um, strategy, you know, maybe technique, different shots. Where do you see the game going from here? Like if you were to just um, dream or imagine, like what, how, how, how much change do you think is, is coming in the next three to five years? I think it's gonna be wild. You know, everyone says that, you know, the top players today aren't going to be the top players. I don't believe that. I, I think the top players are there for a reason. I think they are controlling. You think the top players today in five years are still going to be the top players? Anna Lee Waters is what, 16? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's take Anna Lee out. Okay, we'll take Anna Lee and we'll take 
Ben Jobs. Because remember, yeah. we're talking about top five men and top five women. Now, if Annalie and Ben are still in the top, we're talking about four to four to. Yeah. I mean, two to four or two to five. I think tennis players coming into the sport as just pure ball strikers yeah. are going to work their way up through a ranking. Oh, for right? sure. In singles. In singles, for yes. sure. I, I think um, the, the tours are motivated to have their pros, um, especially, you know, PPA having that as a product, you know, the top, top pros in the game playing every week. Um, you know, it's an advantage because they are playing each other. They are separating themselves. You know, they're not... It's going to take, you know, it's going to take quite an athlete to come in and break through that type of training and experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think in the next three to five years, you're going to have uh, tennis players, um, just pure ball strikers that are able to shape shots. Yeah. As the paddles become what uh, some of the claims are, yeah. you're going to see room for error of two to three feet over the net in singles, bringing mm -hmm. the ball back down into the court. Right. Right. Um, right now you see drives that are almost aimed at the net tape where it's, 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 it, you know, the peak is just over the net and it's yeah. curling right back down. The room for error is so low compared to what I think it could be. And I think that's mm -hmm. where the, you get paddle technology to give more room for error, which is more spin. And it, it allows, you know, athletes from all sports to come in and have a shot, at least in singles doubles. Yeah. I mean, you guys are the doubles experts. You guys got to tell me, I, I personally love watching it, but I can't do any of the stuff you guys are doing. <laughs> it's crazy. I've seen you play doubles. You're not that. You're I not play bad. singles on, on with three other players on the court. I, I have seen that before. Yeah, I will it's say, not great. <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's actually. I mean, it's it's done you some good. I've I've seen you win. I've seen you win a lot of tournaments. You play doubles. Five o doubles. I play five o doubles. I've yeah. I've been humbled jumping in the pro ranks. Yeah. You know, but uh, okay. you know, I, when I am playing my best, it is not a high you know, percentage game. <laughs> it is not, you know, I'm not going out there feeling like I'm going to beat this guy nine out of 10, you know, five yeah. out of 10 times. I, I'm like, I've got one shot here against this dude. And, yeah. uh, you know, even that's how I talk about doubles. I, you know, I find one person on that team and I'm not even playing a team. I find one person that I want to go up against. <laughs> you just bang at them. And huh? I, I, you know, I try to <laughs> make it a tough funny. day. I stay, I follow them on whatever side of the court they're on and I yep. go straight ahead. And you just that's tee funny. off at them. Yeah. That's yeah. the, it's not a bad strategy, actually. It no. is. It don't say you're too good of a coach to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying it's not a bad strategy. There I mean, go. it's a strategy. It's, it's not a bad one. Hey, I'd rather you have a strategy than not have a strategy. Uh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. That's my place. You got anything else, Katie? No, honestly, I, um, I love what you guys are doing, and I think it's super cool. And I actually uh, had a paddle sent in to Tracy just to kind of see what, uh, what kind of stuff he does. Um, I'm picking it up tomorrow. Um, so hopefully I'll get to ask him some questions and kind of, um, you know, see what he has to say about it, but I, I, yeah. I I'm excited for it. So yeah. An, yeah, any, any future plans or anything you'd like to share about the company or where you're going? Um, anything? Sure. No, I think, um, you know, I, again, this is not my day job. Yeah. Um, what is your day job? I'm right. a consultant. I work with hospitals and health systems. I, um, so it's a small yeah. boutique consulting firm. It's owned by a national law firm. Okay. I, uh, I do a lot of the, the setup of uh -huh. projects. And I, I, um, I, um, I hire very smart attorneys to do the transactions and they, um, in turn have done very well by me throughout my career as a consultant. Oh, very cool. Okay. Yeah. And pickleball is kind of just like your, uh, your little side hustle, your hobby, your, your fun. I didn't think I was going to compete in anything after college tennis. <laughs> and this sport comes along and, you know, before you know the rules, you're like, I think I'm doing this right. Yeah, you right. Know? But you know, it, it's like it, everybody has that feeling and that that ramp up and learning curve. Yeah. So for me, pickleball is just it is such a, a, a unique, special sport where mm. you can have, um, you know, an eight year old and an eighty year old having a competitive game, not just playing the same. It's not like they're yeah. going bowling, mm -hmm. you know, right. on the same playing field. They yeah. are they're playing and they want to, you know, they want to see what the others got. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And um you know, from a business standpoint, such a new sport that yeah. being able to find pain points and gaps and opportunities for me, it's, it's looking and finding folks that are solving problems for the players. That's, that's where I found Tracy was, he was solving a great problem mm. that I was going through, but he was solving that problem for players. So I, you know, I wanted to partner up with him and just, uh, you know, be his advocate, his agent and, and, and see where we take it uh, as far yeah. as plans. 
you know, I would love to push Tracy to bring, um, you know, put his money where his mouth is, make a paddle that's better than every other paddle, use materials that are, um, you know, not just best of breed of what's out there. Like you were talking about, if yeah. I could have this handle, this edge guard, this core, this surface, this yeah. grit, but actually going out and, you know, with his background with the military, doing military grade, um, materials that are going to be even on batch one and batch 1000 that are, mm. uh, manufactured at a, at a, a panel company with, you know, the latest adhesives, the latest materials, and to have the blanks sent to him where all of the stuff that he can do to a paddle. And I'll tell you, we have paddle companies send us their paddles from the factories and asking us, what can you do to this paddle? And so we will take it apart, we'll assess it, but then we'll also rebuild it with a lot of stuff that he's invented. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, we go out and test it and it's, it's pretty clear which one is the mocked up one and which one's the control. Right. So I want to wow. push Tracy to, to go and, and, uh, you know, bring that paddle to life. I'd love to see it. I'd love to, you know, have Selkirk sign off on me playing with it. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's, again, it, this is the reason I got into this was really for Tracy to, to do all the things that he was dreaming up. I want to yeah. keep pushing him to do that. I think he can, and hopefully will bring out a paddle that is, um, you know, hasn't, you know, the likes of some, you know, hasn't been seen before like this, but yeah, meets but, all the standards and right. requirements and it would be legal. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't have the risks of yeah. you know, a mass produced product, try mm -hmm. to do smaller batches. A lot of the, you know, the pros that have found him through just conversations and deficiencies they yeah. found in their own paddles, you know, instead of, you know, trying to sell people on sponsorship deals, have, you know, you put a paddle in their hands and says, this will give you the best chance to win. Yeah. Seeing what that type of company looks like. So as far as working with Tracy and paddles, I, I want to keep pushing him. I think as yeah. far as Arizona pickleball goes, I'm going to go watch you tomorrow night. Let's go. At uh, Arizona Pickleball League at the Orchard by, right. by Jigsaw Health. Yep. Shout out to the what is it, Scottsdale Scorchers. That's right, folks. That's right. Tell us the matchup. Uh, oh, well, of course. I'm uh, playing against my boss. His name is Ryan Treffery. <laughs> oh, you know what? When you said you're going to play against someone special, I was like, who are you talking about? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I thought you knew. Oh, no, I'm, no. Uh, I'm playing Ryan's team. And... Uh, I mean, there's there's been some uh, some playful banter at work, and there's been some not so playful banter, but you know what? At the end of the day, you know you're gonna see a Scottsdale Scorchers wins. <laughs> I can uh, I can almost guarantee that, almost. Okay, all right. Uh, but, but then the next word is guarantee. No, but I think it's great. So the Arizona Pickleball League new, right? Yep. Is your the second week? It's brand spanking new. Yeah, literally last week was opening week. So what I what I love about this is I think we're in a time and place where Arizona pickleball is on the map, right? Yep. I think what's what's missing in pickleball is infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? You got to have courts, you got to have coaches, you've got to have access to um, you know players that want not only to learn the sport and get brought up and progress, but to continue to progress and reach whatever level you know whatever ceiling they may have, and having yep. that type of infrastructure. Um, you know, is, is what I'm excited about. So I, I, I um, you know, I, I try to stay involved in, in, you know, who is solving players problems and yeah, yeah. that's probably what, where uh, you may see me next. There you go. I love Ooh, it. Man. Awesome. That's awesome. Any last thoughts, Brett, anything you want to tell, tell the, your, uh, paddle fix fans out here. Oh, man. No, I think a hey, paddle fix is a service for the players to help you keep playing with your favorite paddle. Um, we do not have, any preference on any paddle company. We have nothing bad to say about any paddle company. This is really to help the paddle companies um, retain their their customers. We believe that um, you know these players really are your customers and we try to do right. Um, the fixes that we have made, we have sent to Carl Smiths, uh, his you know from the equipment standards team at USA Pickleball. Uh, his big concern was if we're going to install a new edge guard, is it more secure and it one it's 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 absolutely secure but it's also you know, definitely more secure than a an edge guard that risks yeah. coming off and I, I don't know what could happen but yeah. uh, the idea is um, we're trying to do things the right way above board um, not trying to be the best kept secret we're just you know it's a small business that uh, you know again it's it's it, it'll be a, a small business as a service for players but 
the reason we got into it, or at least I got interested in yeah. it, is you know I want to know as much as I can about this industry because it's just it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And well, you, you guys have your secret sauce. You know, you, you can't. You know, if I owned a restaurant and I had the most amazing garlic bread, I'm not going to go sharing sharing my recipe. You know, that's just me. That's just me. So, yeah. you know, what you guys do is not only changing the game, but it's also still completely legal and super cool. So yeah. I love it. Yeah, Brett, thanks for being on, man. And uh, yeah, good luck to all your endeavors here in the paddle uh, industry and just pickleball industry. So we'll we'll have you back on and, and see how you're doing. That's right. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. We're going to have a uh, Brett Warner follow-up. Yeah. Oh, Again, Brett Warner. <laughs> I will keep it going, guys. Thank Cheers. you, man. Thanks Appreciate so much. Thanks to you, everyone. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next episode.